From the syntax perspective, we will cover React fragments, arrow functions and their usage, and React components with curly braces versus parentheses. So what are React fragments? Most of the time, a React component returns more than one element, and we put an extra node such as a div. This is to wrap multiple elements into a single one before it is returned. Now React fragments allow you to group these multiple elements inside empty tags. These empty tags are called React fragments. It eliminates the need to add extra node to the DOM. So don't be surprised if you see the syntax in the course. Arrow functions is an ESX feature that allows us to write short functions in JavaScript and do not have its bindings to this keyword. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have an array of vegetables that has all the veggies. We want to return the length of every vegetable in a new array. Traditionally, we would write a function like this. Iterate over the veggies collection and returns a new array. On running this function, this is the result we get. Each element in this new array is the length of vegetable at that index. For example, carrots has seven characters, potato has a length of six, and so on. But with arrow functions, we can reduce this function a little bit. We remove the keyword function and have a single parameter called vegetable. We also introduced an arrow if you haven't noticed already. This function still returns an array containing the length of each vegetable in the collection. We can further reduce this code to look like this. Thanks to arrow functions in ES6. When the only statement in an arrow function is return, we can remove return statement and the curly braces. So whenever you see a syntax like this, remember that they are arrow functions. Let's look at another code example to see how arrow functions help avoid this keyword binding. The link for code sandbox is in the readme file under module 2 instructions, arrow functions in React. If you have already opened the link, this example is bootstrapped using create react app. Index.js under the root of the project renders the overview component. Let's look at the overview component now. Overview is a React class component. It has a constructor function where super with props called the parent constructor. Then we assign to this dot show details the result received from the right hand side. Now what is the code on the right hand side doing? When we call this dot show details dot bind with an argument, it creates a new function with the same body and scope as show details. But in this new function, this keyword is now bound to the first argument we provided to bind function. What's the argument we passed? We passed this to bind function. And this keyword inside the constructor refers to the instance of overview class. Always remember function.bind sets the value of that function's this keyword. So regardless of how this function is called, this keyword inside the function will always bound to the argument that was passed to it. We will go through an example to get a deeper understanding of this concept. Then there is a show details function which logs the value of this keyword and calls another function show alert. Now show alert function is used to display an alert with my name. Finally, there is a render function that returns a button. Now button has an on click event to which we pass the show details handler. Let's run and see what happens. We get this button. When we click on the button, we get an alert and console.log which gives us the value of this keyword. This keyword refers to the overview object. All good. This is what we wanted. Now let's try something. Let's remove this binding and keep everything as is. When we run it and click on the button, we see that there was no alert. And the console says with regular function, this refers to undefined. What happened? Well, one thing we can clearly see, since this keyword is undefined, calling undefined.showAlert will definitely not work. Now the question is why this keyword is undefined? It is undefined because show details function is called directly and not as a method or property of overview instance. When button is clicked, show details function, which was passed as a reference was invoked, but the context of this keyword was lost, which makes it undefined. To make sure that the context of this keyword remains intact, we bind it to the instance of overview class inside the constructor, which is why we had the binding in the constructor. Arrow function replaced this whole exercise of binding. So now if we go back to the code and comment out this show details function and the binding inside the constructor and just use this arrow function with name show details, run it again. Now on clicking on the button, we got the alert and this keyword inside show details function now represents the overview class. This is because with arrow functions, this keyword always represents the object that defined the arrow function, which is overview. 
and that is one of the reasons why we would not call the dot bind when using the arrow functions. Now there are different ways of writing React components. Let's look at few of them which will be used in the course. Here in this example, app is the root level element. It returns first name component inside a React fragment. One way of writing React component is the way we have written first name. It is an arrow function that takes props as a parameter. Then we destructure the props, which means the caller needs to send the name property, which can be used inside this component and return the name wrapped in an H1 element. Another way of writing a stateless React component is the way we have added the address component. It is also an arrow function, as you can see, but with parentheses instead of curly braces. Also, we can omit the return statement here. When we use parentheses, there is no return statement. So we need to make sure that only one expression is returned, which in our case is the React fragment that wraps the H3 and H4 elements. Yet another way of writing React component is the way we have added the last name component here. It takes props and returns an H2 element with the name destructured from the props directly. Here, we have omitted parentheses and there is no return statement since all can be written in a single line. But we can only omit parentheses if the statement can be returned in a single line, which is the case here. And all of these components are called inside the app along with their properties. In case you want to play around with this example, the link for the code sandbox is available in your readme file module 2 instructions.